In this video, we're going to learn how to create generative ambient music. So, what is ambient music? As Brian Eno explained, ambient is intended to induce calm and the space to think. Ambient music must be able to accommodate many levels of listening attention without enforcing one in particular. It must be as ignorable as it is interesting. What we're going to do in this video is to create a pure data patcher that will algorithmically compose and play ambient music. In order to get started, we need to first write down some characteristics of ambient music. This genre of music is typically very slow, so let's choose 60 as the BPM. In terms of harmonic progressions in ambient music, it doesn't need to be anything too complex. We can have the progression to be major 1 and major 4 harmonies, and we'll choose C major as the key. As you can tell from my choice of the key and the harmonic progression, we're dealing only with basic music theory. The focus of this video is the algorithm. That being said, it's a great idea to learn about music theory if you want to create generative music. We could make generative music while disregarding music theory, but we'll most likely end up with something like this. One approach is to analyze the harmonic progressions of your favorite ambient pieces and use them in your generative patcher. What sounds should we use? Let's go for round and warm sounds. So we'll be using low pass filters. In terms of the instrumentation, we're going to have bass and a pad sound for the melody. And that's it. Again, we're keeping things super simple here. In terms of the sound design and the texture, we're going to use low pass filtered sawtooth wave for the bass and the melody synth. And for the melody synth, we're going to apply reverb to it. When making ambient music, reverb is our best friend. Freeverb isn't the best sounding reverb but that's what we're going to use today. I might actually make a video dedicated to finding great sounding reverb for pure data. So be on the lookout for that. Next thing to consider is the generative aspect. The bass note will go back and forth between C and F. So the bass will play C for two measures and then switch to F and play that note for two measures. And it'll repeat that pattern for all eternity and the patcher will randomly choose a note from the C major scale. So the music will sound something like this. Okay, now we're ready to take a look at the pure data patch. If you haven't watched my previous tutorials, please do so right now, because I'll be skipping over stuff that I already talked about before. Let's get started. So what do we typically do first when we work on music in a DAW? We usually set the BPM first. So we'll do the same here. This is what the patcher for BPM looks like. We can set the BPM using this number object right here. So we're dividing the beat by 60,000 milliseconds, which is one minute. And we get ourselves the length of each quarter note. By the way, we'll be using the send object a lot in this video. Next, we'll do clock division and multiplication. If we multiply the quarter note length by four, we get the total length of one measure or one whole note we can do something similar for the half note. And by using division, we can get the length of time for the eighth note and sixteenth note. We'll only deal with whole note today, but I figured I should show these for future reference. Now that we got the BPM and the clock division and multiplication all set to go, what's next? We need a toggle object that will start and stop the entire generative system. Okay, this sequencer should look familiar to you. If you need a refresher, Please watch the sequencer tutorial from a few weeks ago. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Every two measures, this toggle object will change its on-off state. It will start out toggled off, and after two measures, it will toggle on. And after another two measures, it will toggle off again. And this goes on for all eternity. And the toggle object is connected here for the bass. We decided earlier that the harmonic progression for this ambient music is major 1 and major 4. So we'll simply have the bass note go from C to F and back and forth. Here we have the frequencies of low C and F. And we have a bass synth here. 
When we hit start on this patcher by clicking here, the toggle state will start as off and output 0. So this select 0 object will trigger this button and bang this message object, which has the frequency of low C. Therefore, the bass note will start with C, and it will sustain that note for two measures. And at the start of the third measure, the toggle will be on and output a 1 which will trigger this button. And now the bass note will change to an F. And the note will go back to C again after two more measures. Okay, let's take a look at the melody next. This button will be triggered at the start of every measure. And it's triggering this thing which will then output a random frequency as we can see here. That random frequency is then used for these sawtooth waves. And these sounds are going to a reverb and then finally to the DAC. Okay, let's step back a little bit here. What is this chord's scales? If you try to create this object in your pure data patcher, chances are nothing is going to happen. This is called a sub patcher. When we click on it, we can see that there's a whole another patcher inside of it. A patcher inside of a patcher. Before I can explain the purpose of a sub patcher, let's quickly take a look at what's going on inside. So, we have an inlet object, which is outputting that bang message from this button that we saw earlier, and it's triggering this random 8 object. And that random number is sent here. As we can analyze here, the random number is utilized to choose which note from the C major scale will be used. Therefore, those random frequencies that were being generated earlier were randomly chosen notes from the C major scale. And the randomly selected note will be sent out via the outlet object. So this subpatcher outputs a random note from the C major scale every time it receives a bang. But what's the point of making this a subpatcher? Can we just have something like this? Yes, we can. But let's say we want to add two more synths with a random note generator like this. And what if we made a mistake? For example, the MIDI note for B is 71. But if we accidentally had 70, we need to fix that three times. But if we fix that same mistake once inside of the subpatcher and hit save, the same change will be applied in the other existing instances of this same subpatcher, as in we only need to fix the mistake just once instead of three times like earlier. As we can imagine, this will be a huge time saver in the long run. We can efficiently improve the random note generator by using a subpatcher. For example, we can add other harmonic progressions and scales. So, whenever you feel like you're using the same algorithm or set of objects together all over the patcher, it might be a good idea to use a subpatcher. To make a subpatcher, create a new patcher and save it in the same folder as your main patcher. And now, when you type the name of the file in the main patcher, it'll show up. Cool. We got ourselves a generative ambient patcher. Let's turn it on. Awesome. Because Freeverb doesn't sound too good, what we can do is download this audio rerouter application called Black Hole. After installing it, we can change the output to Black Hole here. And let's open our DAW of choice and change the input to Black Hole. And now we can use our favorite VSTs and make things sound much better. And we can also record our pure data audio as well. We could have used right SF tilde object, but I'm not a big fan of it. Congratulations, we successfully made a generative ambient patcher. Okay, what can we do next? I believe the next step is to analyze your favorite ambient pieces and write down the characteristics so that you can incorporate them into your next patcher. Okay, have fun creating music. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.